good afternoon and thank you for being here. This is uh, to mark the launch of a very uh, precious book, Ganga Jamini, Silver and Gold, A Forgotten Culture by Naz Ikramullah, who is also here and we are very privileged to have her because she lives abroad and makes it uh, a point to be at KLF every, each year. And this year she's uh, here with her book. And the book is, a, is indeed um, a treasure of uh, both uh, information and commentary and personal experience, uh, particularly with, in the kind of environment and household she grew up and how she imbibed the various influences um, from uh, different religions, different cultures, and which led uh, to, uh, which have historically led to the creation of the of what is, what we know as the Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb or a composite culture. Sadly, which is uh, uh, another <laughs> culture in decay or at least threatened. So uh, I will uh, not take more time, and I will uh, because we are short of time. So I'll ask Naz Apa, whom uh, Naz Ikramullah, who I call her Naz Apa for years, uh, to let us know why. Uh, this book and how did she think of this book because it covers uh, so many um, media and so many forms uh, both in terms of uh, art, uh, in terms of uh, dress, cuisine, calligraphy, etc. And how did all of that shape her book? Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, I love this kind of support. It makes me feel good. Uh, I uh, began this book because I had done a film on South Asia's Muslim women some 10 years ago, more than 10. Um, and uh, uh, Kamal Hussain, Dr. Kamal Hussain from Bangladesh said, uh, you know, there's a book here. And I said, you know, I'm a painter and an artist. I don't write books. And he went on and I was fed lots of nice lunches and so on. And he kept saying, you have to do it. So I did it. Um, and then it, it became a thing that I had to find the right things. I went to the British Library, I found books and so on, and I kept researching. And you know, it's like a Pandora's book. Everything you opened led to something else and led to something else. But naturally, it, what I was trying to say, and I'm kind of happy I did it, is that you know, we have lost the way, it seems to me, about who we are. And um, the, as I say in my introduction, the Pakistan uh, that I knew was a, not the Pakistan I see now. And the Pakistan I knew uh, allowed for us to have other things. I look at my three or four friends wearing saris. And uh, you know, we are now asked, Aap kaha se hain? And you say, Bhai, hum yaha se hain. So that kind of attitude towards the garments, towards what we do, even to what we speak has become under threat. Um, Shima very kindly uh, agreed to uh, let me use her photograph because I think her work and also what she does is the composite culture which I'm talking about. I want Shima to speak now, then we will go back to things. Shima, up uh -huh. Thank you, Nazapa. It was a great honor that Nazapa had to put on my book cover. मैं जो एक दो चीजें आप लोगों के साथ शेयर करना चाहती थी वो नाजापा की ही अल्फाजों में से उनके जो उन्होंने लिखा because I think that is kind of very interesting and it gives you an introduction to the book and we entice you to buy it so she says that as the two religious communities settled down in the new geographical borders, the old culture I had grown up in came under attack from various sides of society. Soon, persons in charge of new services began the first steps to change the culture. They started Arabizing Urdu in Pakistan and sans Sanskritizing Hindi in India. Suddenly, People on both sides of the border could not understand the spoken language known as Hindustani, which for North Indians had been a great binding force. Then she goes on, um, and I'm just cho cho choosing a few lines from here and there, uh, talking about the shared rituals. Um, she says that Muslim women had in the past always enjoyed the colorful and significant rituals which surround the activities at weddings and other important events. However, they are today increasingly being, being denied the expression of this. She says, 
I saw the increasing influence of Saudi Wahhabism culture on Pakistanis and people started changing how they lived and practiced their religion. Many men began wearing long beards and the women rejected traditional dress in favor of Arab gowns and hijab. Often they also started rejecting customs they had enjoyed, both religious and social. The politics of Islamization under Ziaul Haq threatened people's lives. The language and curriculum of schools were affected. Laws were passed declaring some citizens non-Muslims. It even affected traditional words used in saying goodbye. This behavior has even affected Muslims of India and Bangladesh. One result of the law was that Muslim women were being victimized. I felt that Muslim women who had led dynamic lives needed to be recognized. And this is what her book was about, is about. Um, and I think that this is exactly um, so pertinent to the times that we are living in and to the Karachi especially that we are living in. Um, we just did a little play which was called Kirchi Kirchi Karachi and in that we had this episode about Adab and Salam, you know, how people say now turn around and say, Adab kyun keh rahe aap? Adab to ghair islami hai. So is the haan ki cheeze. And I think this is what is so important in her book that it's actually talking about how these two communities, if you call care to call them communities, but they were part of one family. Hindus and Muslims lived together harmoniously and uh, shared uh, the same culture, sh shared the same history, shared the same rituals. I just wanted to, uh, I won't take long, just Would one minute just more. In, that in Lucknow, there is, a, uh, there, was, there is still this mand mandir, the, Pura uh, the Purana Hanuman Mandir, which has um, an Islamic symbol. It's, it has, uh, and as a crown, it has uh, the crescent. So, uh, and this, this temp, uh, mandir was built by Nawab Sadat Ali Khan. Then of course we have, and she mentions in a book, all the great poets like Kabir and Amir Khusro, and in, uh, on this side of the border, Bulle Shah, who carried the same bhakti traditions of, uh, um, uh, of togetherness. And, um, and I also want to me mention Hasrat Mohani, because I think he's also a very important person in this whole tradition um, of, of the synthesis of the culture, in which he's written such beautiful poetry and praise of Krishna. And uh, CM Naim has actually written an essay called uh, The Maulana Who Loved Krishna. So, this are the things that were the culture of this culture, and this culture was a very important part. And I think maybe if I can have um, read out just uh, a, a two lines from uh, Maharaja Kishan Prashad, who was born in 1864. He was a poet of great renown. His takhallus was Shad. And he says that I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim. Every religion is my religion. Shad is a religion. Shad is a religion. Azadi is a religion. Wow, wow. So, um, <laughs> Thank you, Nazapa, for give, bracing me on your, on your book, and uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. Yeah. It was a pleasure for me, too. Um, I just wanted to mention the word adab and salam alaikum. Salam alaikum is an equalizer, and it, but it's a Muslim greeting, actually, because some people, particularly say in India, they prefer to say adab. Adab means my respects. So we used to say to anybody who was older than us, we'd say adab, and we'd, we'd also salam. So it was, a, it was an equalizer. It doesn't mean that you are saying namaste or you are saying salam alaikum. You are saying adab. So it is not, it's a non-denominational greeting. And you know, it's things like that that we have forgotten. There is no need to Islamize everything we do. Uh, Islam is part of our lives. Uh, lots of our people, friends, my friends also, I'm not so good, but they do. They disappear, they say their prayers, they come back. Uh, they say their prayers five times a day. It's good, people do that, but they don't impose it on you, they don't threaten you, and it's good. That's the way it should be. That's, that's what, in a way, Pakistan allows people to do. Yeah. But uh, we, should, we should understand that by, by making our, yani, uh, khalqa chota kar rahe na, isse bahut taklif hoti hai mujhe, ke hum apne mulk ko khamakha, ye ek dehre mein bana rahe hai. And uh, everybody has been talking about the same fear that we should not uh, make our lives 
constrained by other people's beliefs of what we should be. And it's no doubt that Pakistan has been hijacked and we, sh we should, I've said this in Lahore, I'm saying it again, we should not allow our country to be hijacked. That's what's happening. Absolutely, but... Uh, uh, Reza, <clears throat> can I just say, another very beautiful thing about this uh, Ganga Jamuni culture was the this, this secular aspect of it. You yes. know, yeah. that's what the Nazi is saying, that the religion was their own, but it was not the imposition of the religion of people's lives. Absolutely. Look, in Pakistan, there is no God of God, which doesn't use the word. It's not the word of me. The new people, who are उनको इस चीज का इल्म ही नहीं है कि क्योंकि मैं भी जब बड़ा हूँ तो खुदा हाफ़ इस हमने सीखा था मगर अब अब टेलीविज़न देखिए अखबारात देखिए आम आम गुफ्तगु में टेलीफ़ोन पर हर जगह आपको अल्लाह हाफ़ इस सुनाई देगा कोई बुरी बात नहीं है कोई ऐसी मायूब बात भी नहीं है मगर वही एक चीज है कि एक सेक्युलर जो हमारा था माजी वो बदल रहा है अब भी अब तो ये आलम है कि लाहौर में जो नंबर प्लेटें हैं गाड़ियों की उस पर लिखा है अल बाकिस्तान अब कोई ये पूछे कि अल बाकिस्तान जो है ये कहाँ का है हमें तो पाकिस्तान का पता है तो पाकिस्तान तो मेरा मुल्क ही नहीं है पाकिस्तान के माने लैंड ऑफ अरे अरे ये समझते नहीं हैं तो अब देखिए मतलब ये कि identity का मसला हो गया ना हमें तो ये हमें तो ये मालूम था कि ये पाकिस्तान है पंजाब है और ये है और वो है और वो मिलकर एक एक जगह बन रही है मगर हमने तो उसका हुलिया ही बिगाड़ डाला तो अब पाकिस्तान जो बच्चे जानेंगे number plate को पढ़कर और पंजाब चूंकि सबसे बड़ा मेरे ख्याल से ये किताब इसलिए अहम है क्योंकि ये दोबारा से इस तरह की जो काविशें होती हैं वो ये बावर कराती हैं कि हमें अपने तशखुस जो है उसका ध्यान उसी तरह रखना है और उसको उसको बिगड़ने नहीं देना नहीं तो हुलिया ही बिगड़ जाता कामों का और तहजीबों का तो हमारे पास पंद्रह मिनट और हैं तो अगर हम सवाल जवाब और गुफ्तु कर लें अगर शीमा जी कुछ और कहना चाहती हैं आप मैं एक आध चीज और कहना चाहती हूँ ये अल बाकिस्तान का मुझे इस तरह मालूम है कि मेरे मियां काफी उर्दू दांत हैं और उनको पता था कि अल बाकिस्तान के ये माने हैं क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ पे नहीं यानी अरबों में पे नहीं है तो मगबे है तो इसकी वजह से मगर बाकिस्तान के माने अब I may correct me if I'm wrong but it means land of thieves so इसके क्या जरूरी है कि हम इसको यानी इश्तेहार दें कि हम चोर हैं मेरे ख्याल से फ्रॉयड साहब हाँ उनको उनसे रुझू करना चाहिए कि कभी-कभी अरबाइज करने में भी इसी तरह की जो हैं सच्चाइयाँ निकल आती हैं अब इसका मुझे पूरी तरह इल्म नहीं है मगर मेरे मियां काफी पढ़े लिखे थे उनको ये सब चीजें मालूम थी और ज़बान पे तो बहुत उबूर था जिसकी वजह से मेरी ज़बान काफी साफ हो गई Talking to him in Urdu for my married life, my Urdu became quite good. So I'm rather pleased of the fact that I acquired my language of, through marriage. Some people, uh, like my sisters, have acquired Bengali and uh, uh, Arabic, uh, but I acquired my own language, which is good. <laughs> All right, now uh, I'm let's open to questions. Open up uh, to the <laughs> audience if they have reactions. <laughs> yes. Thank you for a lovely book. Um, uh, one of the best books I've read is your mother's autobiography from Parda to Parliament, okay. which is um, testament to a remarkable uh, woman and a remarkable career. Could you speak briefly about how her personality and influence may have helped you develop as an artist and person of culture? She had a profound influence on both me and my elder sister and then I suppose my little sister too, though she uh, was not aware of what we got. Uh, my mother, uh, of course, at partition was uh, very much, uh, you know, in parliament and so on. And she was aware that um, people, you know, how women are, they would say, Haan, sahab, aapki to kharab ho jayengi. Aap to ghari mein nahi rehti. You know, that sort of rubbish. So, ye hai ki amma spent a lot more time with us uh, because of that. And she was very keen on the Urdu language. Um, we lived abroad for several years uh, from the age, I was 12, I suppose, when we went. And Amma would teach us Urdu uh, in the mornings on Saturdays. And at that time, I didn't realize how important it would be. But when I did some research for the little film that goes with the book, um, I said, Amma, you have done this good, that you have taught me Urdu, because 
کیوریٹرس کہتے تھے ان انگریزی بول بول کے زبان تھک جاتی ہے تو اٹس اے گڈ تھنگ یو ٹاٹ می انگلش بیکاز ادر وائز ہاؤ ووڈ آئی ہیو مینیج اینڈ آلسو شی واز ویری بیکاز مائی مدر واز ان پردہ ٹل شی واز ایٹین ایز یو نو فرام دا بک اینڈ دین شی واز پروفاؤنڈلی انفلوئنس بائی دا پردو پردہ کلچر شی ڈنٹ ریئلائز اٹ ہر سیلف بٹ اٹ واز دیر اینڈ سو انیشلی اے ویری فیمس جینٹل مین کول مالکم اگریج دیٹ she wouldn't shake hands. She felt shy to shake hands. Or if she saw a great uncle and she was at a reception, she hid. That kind of thing. But we also got influenced by this. So we would behave in a different way to perhaps girls who are now growing up because we had uh, a background of being told, you know, don't do this, don't do that. It was very important to us to understand Uh, what what was done and sometimes like my mother taught us that when you take something from somebody like a pan do an adab and then she, she said one day she didn't know then she saw uh, Raja Sahib's uh, grandsons do that Amrani said shukar hai koi to karta hai because so many things perhaps were going out of fashion anyway but Amma was very keen that we should understand our traditions understand what things were and I keep meeting wonderful people who say that she had a very open uh, personality and she was very, you know, generous in the way she met people. And I think that that also we learned. She never had this, she was a Muslim leaguer, but she did not believe in partition as it happened. I have to say that because, I mean, of course she came to the country because she felt that, you know, she was responsible for all those terrible things that were happening. But Amma has said it in her book, which you say you have read. Uh, when she asked Mr. Jinnah what he wanted, he said he wanted what Quebec had in Canada, which was two nations, but with a one thing. And you know, the federating units were supposed to be that. So we all know that he wasn't that bloodthirsty megalomaniac that he's made out now. You know, there are either that picture of Mr. Jinnah or there are other pictures, none of which are true. I mean, the man was not any of those things. He was a very strict lawyer. Ye baat to hai. But, you know, other than that. So, anyway. Um, Reza, can I just say one thing more? Gee. I think I would like to say a word <coughs> about uh, the fact that there's a, a dance uh, um, on the cover of the book. Because people's uh, association is that Kathak is yes. Muslim Bari dance. I just want to say that I don't think dance can, <laughs> or like any other art form, can be either Muslim or, or Hindu. Hindu. Yes. I mean, you know, it, uh, so, um, and the reason why this is, is because this, this form was actually pre, uh, in fact, it's pre-religion perhaps, like uh, a lot of the old classical dances, it was part of our storytelling traditions, and then it evolved in different ways with a, with a very um, interesting synthesis of Persian, Turkish, Central Asian, Afghan, local Indian uh, cultures put together. And um, the old Kathaks were telling stories of Lord Krishna. The Krishna, which you have heard, Krishna Ras, Krishna's Leela, you know, his episodes, his life, and they were all in Kathak style. Mein yeah. Jate the. Yeah. So, um, you know, just to uh, yeah. have my word in that it's actually not about... No, no, uh, it's a very important yeah, clarification yes, yeah. because that's the common perception that Kathak somehow is Muslim, Bharat Nat Nat Natyam is Hindu, so there's no such thing. Yeah, but that is uh, why her being on my cover is the synthesis. She <clears> is <throat> part of the synthesis of our culture. Indeed. Because Kathak was taken by us and made into the Mughal form of dance, but that she is the epitome in her dance form of true. that. And if you know your stuff, then you know what you're, what you're saying. Very the true. trouble is a lot of us don't know our stuff. <laughs> 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 Any other questions is or comments? Ji, ji, ji. The mic, DJ. Mic is not in the mic. No, no. They are behind. They are behind. This is the fact that it is a Muslim dance. But I don't know if it is a Shia or a Sunni. In my opinion, it is a Ahmadi. In my opinion, it is a Ahmadi. 
अच्छा ये भी कह लिया आपने खतरे की घंटी बजवा दी तो अच्छा बहरहाल तो बस मेरे ख्याल से हमें पांच मिनट और रह गए तो नाजा आप मैं आपसे एक दो सवाल कर लेता हूँ जब तक लोग सोच रहे हैं आपने बहुत जगह जिक्र किया कि जो मुस्लिम खातन जो कपड़े पहनती थीं और तो उसमें जो इन्फ्लुस थे और जो उन्होंने बहुत कुछ बौरव किया था जरा थोड़ा सा उसके बारे में बताइए भाई साड़ी की सा, सा, की आपने और चीज़ें साड़ी की तो मुझे ये मालूम है कि अम्मा कहती थी कि उनके ज़माने में अगर उसके ऊपर फूल पत्ती थी वो इस्लामी साड़ी थी सॉर्ट ऑफ हाँ मगर उस पर अगर वो थे ना कुछ मूर्तियाँ या कुछ वो नहीं पहनते थे अम्मा कहती थी कि उनकी नानी वगैरह मेरी नान, नानी क्या मेरी मेरी नानी उनकी वालदा कहती थी ये हम नहीं पहनते तो ये चीज़ें थीं फिर हमारे पास तस्वीरें हैं हमारी अम्मा की फुपी के वो यहाँ तक के उनके स्लीव वगैरह होते थे और मगर अम्मा कहती थी कि गरारे के ऊपर और वो चोली वोली होती थी उस कस्म की तो उसमें बहुत सी चीज़ें थीं मैंने असल में रस्मों का जो बताया है जो कि मैं फिर से आपको बताती हूँ इसमें एक तस्वीर भी है और मेरी बहन की चचाजात बहन है उसका उसकी मांग भरी जा रही है तो वो मांग जो भरी जाती थी तो वो पहले तो गांव में तो सिंदूर वेंदूर लगाते थे मगर हम लोगों ने इसको लिया और संदल को डुबो उसको यूँ करके फिर अफशाँ डालते थे तो हमने रिसर्च में अम्मा ने देखा कि मैंने गलती लिखी मैंने लिखा कि 1930 में ये फिर बदल गया अम्मा ने कहा नहीं बेटे मीर अनीस का शेर समझो मैंने वो भी लिखा उसमें मीर अनीस ने कहा या रब रसूल पा की खेती हरी रहे बच्चों से नहीं खेती हरी रहे संदल से मांग बच्चों से गोदी भरी रहे मीर अनीस ने कहा था तो आप सोचिए तो ये बहुत पुराना कल्चर हमारा जो कि हम लोग भूल जाते हैं कितनी अच्छी रस्म थी कि हम लोग इस तरह मांग भरते थे और हमारे एक और बहुत अच्छे क्यूरेटर थे हैदराबाद में नहीं सॉरी रामपुर में और उन्होंने कहा कि बात ये थी कि औरतें शादियां हुई थी वो अपने रस्में नहीं छोड़ना चाहती थी तो उन्होंने उनको थोड़ी सी तब्दील कर लिया तो उन्होंने बहुत अच्छी तरह बताई मुझे बहुत सी चीज़ें फिर हमारी एक और भाभी थी उन्होंने बताया कि गाँव में कोहबार होता था उसमें राधा कृष्णा की तस्वीरें होती थीं अब औरतें तो ये नहीं बना सकती थीं तो उन्होंने क्या किया कि वो पंजतन और ये कर, केरी बनाती थी मगर बनाती ज़रूर थी तो हम जब इसको कर रहे थे जो लेडीज़ आई थी लखनऊ की कहने लगी ये तो हम लोग पूरा करते थे मगर अब लोग कह रहे हैं शिरक है तो वहाँ भी वो लोग पहुँच गए हैं हिंदुस्तान में भी जो उनको मना करते हैं तो मैं आपसे कह रही हूँ कि ये चीज़ जो है ना हम लोगों को लड़ना चाहिए इनके बारे में यानी नेक तरीके से लड़ना चाहिए धक्का वक्का ना दें मगर कहें कि नहीं नहीं चले बहुत खूब हाँ। बहुत खूब और मेरे ख्याल से इसी के साथ वील क्लोज द सेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच अगेन फॉर बीइंग हियर एंड पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द डिस्कशन नॉट हियर आई कैन साइन आउट बिकॉज़ आई थिंक समबडी एल्स इज कमिंग थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू रजा इट वाज वेरी नाइस आउटसाइड जस्ट हियर हां